You know, we need to show off in a Barbie movie um, how exactly it is that dresses and suits were made beautifully crafted to the individual person. Um, for example, when it came to dresses, they would weave all kinds of exotic fabrics together with hand or foot pedal crank giant looms and they'd have assistants that would load in different types of threads and they'd weave it into the cloth all over the place and they'd actually be sitting on this loom where if they tilt their ass on the seat it would bend different directions and they could spin the direction of the loom needle to do like swirls and stuff and so this is uh this is medieval type technology you know so this just we just need somebody to show this off and show off the art of uh, what's been lost. What I'm saying is we need a whole like different cultures have different ways of, of making fancy clothing at high speed by hand because they have to custom fit it to the people anyways. And so like for example, Zendaya is obsessed with, you know, large needle whatever that's called well that type of stuff um there's a, the whole thing where you have two people three people even four or five all working together in a pattern bringing in their own angles and it's all weaved with a rhythm and you all you know move your needle grab the string move it and you, you get into a rhythm and you do it and you create the big old mosaic or whatever you're doing um I mean, that's like intense level, because I just heard she was sitting around, you know, crocheting or knitting or whatever. So we got to take it hardcore level, because, you know, we need to have all different kinds of clothing of different cultures, you know, traditional, not, not medieval, just how they always have dressed since the beginning of time to feel like they're connected to their culture. You know, everyone knows that. So there's even the ways that the Mexicans spin out their dresses, you know, hems in a traditional way using like corn husk like shaped like, you know, loom uh, or not loom, like dress shaped thing that they like build that goes off at all angles like the corn pieces and then they put the dress over it. <laughs> That's the really old traditional way. And then they, uh, you know, actually spin it they spin the whole dress piece on it with the fabric and then it's knitted in as it spins at a certain speed. It's really unique. They had a donkey that would go and pull, push around to do it and back in the old days, you know? <laughs> that was pretty cool. And it's all different. You guys got to look up. You got to know your own cultures, you know, various suit and dress making talents. This just has to be researched. I can't talk about it all myself. It literally causes me too much hormonal pain, like just, it's like, you know, trying to remember too much or something, so, yeah. She's the ultimate killer robot, check it out. See how she's twisting the weights like that and going up and down? No one does that. Yeah, th that's, Perfect. How, that's how a killer robot would, would work out, to get even better tendons, except Yeah, can't whoever this woman is, hire her. She needs to be like a Terminator. Here she is being killer robot again. I'll go back. Look at that killer robot instinct. It's incredible. I love beautiful killer robot women. Yep. Awesome. Each time, perfect form. So we have this faith chapel here on Jekyll Island as well. Uh, and it's definitely a Jewish built uh, like synagogue worship spot. It's, I, mean, I love the gargoyles up here, you know, that's fucking awesome. Um, it has awesome stained glass windows. I don't, I couldn't, couldn't find a picture around back if it has an outdoor area for, you know, outdoor shots for a movie, but, um, amazing interior. Look at that vaulted, so nice with the animal heads. It's kind of spooky, you know, but also incredibly, you know, like wholesome feeling and not spooky at all you know, at the same time so like um what I was thinking is we should have a uh, whole um, part of the Barbie movie where you know 
probably too long for one movie, but we get into America Chavez, Barbie doll, her younger sister, um, turning 13 and having her quinceanera. So she's going to do it at a certain church where it's scheduled nearby. That's really nice for venues. But then um, it's already been scheduled for a um, bar mitzvah. And so I realized that um, if you look here, um, it's the Barbie Mitzvah and the Ken Sierra. Ken Sierra. It all works out, you know. So, like, um, you've got different, her friends, you know, could be wearing different outfits. Got different Barbies here. Uh... Got old style Barbie, like real traditional, real old Mexican. Look at that, you got some nice rose blouse, or not blouse, dress. That one's pretty cool. Another one of those. I guess there's a, uh, you know, traditional way they dress young boys up to teenage years as well. <laughs> that's, that's, it's kind of a f funny style, I don't know. Um, yeah, so, then, then the both of the events are scheduled at the same time, so then, um, you need to have, like, actual Jewish music, not, like, Yiddish music, not Persian, not um, Arabian, n not Saudi Arabian, not even Egyptian. We need real Jewish musics with the drums and the horns and, and the yelling, chanting, and with the susurrations. Oh, God, that shit sounds weird. I hate it. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, you, you mix in a mariachi band. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> It'll be funny. It's funny. <laughs> and then all the, you know, well-tailored, you know, Jewish kids are dancing with the uh, Mexicans, and it's a really touching moment, you know? Yes. And then Barbie realizes that she needs more of such touching moments because, you know, she, you know, having your own kids, it takes a while to get them up to that age anyways. So then she, she needs more immediately, even if she wanted to have babies or something. So, like, then we kick it over to high gear where then we get into the uh, Barbie, like, ethnic fashion show. And this is, you know, you can have, like... You know how I was saying in the Barbie movie, there's different ages where they kind of jump gaps and suddenly they're older? Well, it's kind of convenient for this because, you know, you could have different ages represented what they would wear traditionally. So you could do, like, age group from, like, you know, 10 to 15 and then, you know, 5 to 9 and then little kids all dressed up, you know, doing the runway with their older siblings or parents or whatever. And then it would really be a good opportunity to get different common-looking, you know, old-style races of people into a movie where you're saying, well, here, look, this is how they look, so then they can be used in other movies for various reasons. Yeah. It's still blinking, yeah. So, like, here's Cambodia. That's pretty kinky. We just go through these now here. Uh, China. That's pretty cool. Denmark. England. I like the big sleeves all hanging down all with, like, f dyed fur. I don't know. Faux fur. France. Greek. Incan Barbie. I really like this dress color. This is awesome. Like That's radical. Patterns. Yeah, the patterns are so awesome. 
But yeah, like actually having a quinceañera where the women are dressed up in different traditional ways from South and Middle America, that's just so pretty. Uh, and for the, got the classic, you know, India look, a little bit of Asia in there. Uh, here's a Barbie where it's an Indian Negro. I just figured, you know, you need someone who, like... You're supposed to call them Indo-Negro Africanas. Oh, okay, <laughs> my bad. Yeah, I'm totally sure. Yeah, we need one of these, you know, doing running the, you know, fashion show. Because, you know, these types of people are the ones that are always the models that have experience with it. Ireland. See, like, you don't have to have freckles to have nice red hair. There's some nice auburn red hair. You can be brave. Yeah. Extra j white Japan because they don't get much sun because it's raining all the time. Oh, uh, like the rotuses. Yeah. Ooh, mushrooms. It's pretty cool. I mean, people aren't just restricted to what they're wearing here. Some of these, like this one, is um, kind of like it looks like a cheap recreation of people cosplaying in modern day as old like <laughs> it, it kind of looks like somebody made this themselves actually with scissors but i don't know maybe it's officially that way there's a korean type look i guess i don't know uh those don't the face isn't that korean that looks more like... I wouldn't put too much stock in this. this yeah. Chinese. Yeah, that looks... Chinese more... propaganda. You don't believe they're Chinese propaganda, yeah. <laughs> There's Mexico again. Middle European Renaissance Barbie. Navajo. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. With all the... Uh, whatever that's called, that blue gem. Alright, that's all of that. So we need to get away from this idea that career day is attached to schools, is attached to a certain age, and all ages should be grouped together. Why wouldn't random people from the same family or neighborhood or whatever go to career day and the schools are just a place where people of any age go there to do different activities. They're just generalized buildings, just like churches should be, just so you can play your sports, do whatever in different rooms. Um, so the, the, my idea for Barbie is a career day where it's like people trying out doing different careers, you know, so the Barbie can do it as well, and you can have children doing it in different mixed groups you know moving through and all the common ones you know you got them all listed here somewhat um you can do other ones as well um it gives an opportunity for like what i'm trying to say here is a sense of community like as though people are actually nice and perfect because they've eaten wholesome food actually so they just work, their bodies work, they uh, want to try out different stuff. Um, other than that, we also have this other idea, just, um, just Barbie karate, I don't know. Everybody wearing pink karate robes and doing karate together. I don't know, it's just a fun scene, you know. I don't see why, you know, Barbie and Ken couldn't go to a karate lesson with a bunch of different aged people. Like a bunch of, you gotta have big windows, you know, open on the karate studio, of course, where the sunlight's pouring in. Yeah, you have a pink and purple sunset. Like yeah, the... exactly. You know, get the perfect sunset and everything. Then she can be earning her purple belt or whatever. Be amazing, wearing her pink karate stuff. And then she can, uh, she can tie her hair back and give me a blowjob while doing it while getting her purple bed. Okay, yeah. Sure.
Oh, sorry. I was, I was, I was fantasizing. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I like it so much how Barbie Mitzvah and Ken Sinera works out. That's that's amazing. So why shouldn't we just get the sassy younger sister uh, that we saw in uh, Talking with her sister who plays America Chavez to... Seen with Liu, you know, that interaction that happened on YouTube we saw. Well, she's younger, they said she's like 14 or whatever. She could play the America Chavez that, you know, interacts with the Barbies. Yeah, because she's America Chavez, the the Barbie doll. Yeah, the Barbie version, like, yeah. <laughs> That's the joke. Yeah, so it's kind of funny, because then it's like saying that that other... Whatever her name is, it looks like kind of like a doll, sort of, in a weird, different way. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this is like this is Barbie sex music. Yeah, right. Definitely. When things get freaky, suddenly. <laughs> yeah, and the clothes fly and somehow land artistically at different angles in the room, like on a lampshade, you know, all different things, on a cat, you know. Exactly. All the different stuff, you know. Like, you know, America Chavez Barbie dolls, like, upside down, you know, getting muff-raped by, uh, you know, uh, Barbie. Yes. The Barbie movie should be filmed over by Florida, but not quite, just above it, into the area where, you know, it's not going to be as destroyed by storms quite as easily. You see here, there's already Jekyll Island just up into Georgia. Uh, it's a very horse-friendly area. Um, there's a small airstrip at Jekyll Island and over a larger one over here at the main Brunswick town. Um, you got all kinds of, uh, locations for swamp filming if you wanted to do that type of filming in some movie. But the point is here, you've got kinds of cool stuff, you know, for Barbie movie type activities in this area, technically. You've got the, not even mini golf, yeah. I don't know. Different movies do mini golf scenes. Those are kind of fun. But yeah, there's a lot of different riding academies. You can just go out anytime. And so it means it's uh, probably a pretty friendly place for horses. That's all I know. And uh, you can have your Long Beach type area right here. Jekyll Island. Seems logical to me. You already got your fancy centers here. <laughs> 